Magandang araw po sa inyong lahat and once again, welcome to our pre-recorded lecture for the subject, Nursing Care of the High-Risk Newborn to Maturity. And this time, we will be discussing about the Dobowitz or the Ballard Score along with the problems and care related to prematurity. And also, we will be discussing about the assessment, problems and care related to post-maturity. So please bring out your handouts and your ball pens because we will have a fun-filled discussion for today. Last meeting, I asked you to watch a YouTube video regarding the Dobowitz or the Ballard Score Assessment to determine the uh, age of maturity of the preterm newborn you are taking care of. However, for this discussion, we will be talking about how we can use this in uh, our own clinical duties. Okay, so before we proceed, let us first define what the Dobowitz score assessment is and its uh, practical application to our clinical exposure. So when we talk about the Dobowitz score or the Ballard score, it is a tool that evaluates a baby's appearance, skin texture, motor functioning, and reflexes. So the physical maturity part of the examination is usually done and completed during the first two hours after birth. And the neuromuscular uh, maturity, which is determined by the eliciting of the reflexes, is usually completed within the first 24 hours after delivery. So ibig sabihin, yung Dubovitz score natin is ginagawa natin on the first two hours for the physical maturity and then it is completed up to the second day or after the 24 hours after delivery to determine the neuromuscular maturity of the preterm and newborn. Now, uh, what do we do in the Dobowitz score? Sa Dobowitz score po, ginagawa din natin yung parang ginagawa natin sa uh, ating APGAR scoring wherein we assess the preterm a newborn and then we give them specific scores pero instead of 0, 1, 2 like in the APGAR score dito po sa Dobowitz is we give negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 as scores to our preterm infants and what will we do is that we will add all these scores together and that specific sum will help us determine the age of prematurity. So yun po yung ginagawa natin sa ating Dobowitz score. We have different uh, parameters or assessment findings and then we give specific scores from negative 1 up to positive 6 and then we will add them together and then that sum total will help us determine the age of prematurity. So yun po yung ating uh, Dobowitz score or the Ballard score in a nutshell. Now, like I said earlier, there are different parameters that we will look into when we are doing the Dobovitz score. And isana jan is the resting posture of the premature infant or newborn. So, when we look at uh, a premature infant, usually ang nakikita natin sa kanila is that there is an absent or very little flexion in the upper extremity along with partial to no flexion on the lower extremity. So, ibig sabihin parang naka-straight lang or uh, yung kanilang mga upper and lower extremities, no sense of flexion whatsoever. However, when a newborn is full term, they exhibit flexion in all four extremities. So, makikita nyo nakafold po yung kanilang upper, uh, upper extremity and then also the lower extremities also have some sort of flexion. So, makikita po natin sa mga full terms yon. But for premature uh, infants or newborns, wala pong flexion on both upper and lower extremity. When we also look into the square window test or yung wrist flexion, uh, paano natin ginagawa yun is that we try to flex the wrist of, wrist of the uh, newborn and then we apply enough pressure to get the hand as close to the forearm as possible. So ito po yung wrist ng bata. Ano? We try to get the hand as close to the forearm as possible by bending it. Ita try natin ifo fold siya. Now, for preterm uh, newborns, usually yung mga merong uh, prematurity age of 28 to 32 weeks of gestation, 
usually, they will exhibit a 90 degree angle. So, ganito po yung usual na flexion nila. Kaya siya tinawag na square window test. Kasi hanggang dito lang po yung kanilang kaya ng kanilang flexion ng wrist. Alright? But, uh, if a newborn is full term naman po, it is possible to flex the hand onto the arm. Okay? So, pwede nating i ilapit yung kanilang hand up to the arm pag sila ay mga full term. We also have the recoil of extremities. Parang ito yung magnet reflex na ginagawa natin during our assessment of the neuromuscular integrity of the normal newborn. So, paano ba ginagawa yung recall of upper and lower extremities? So, what do we do? We place the infant in a supine position. So, papahigain natin yung preterm na baby. Ano? And then, we will place the legs and the knees fully flexed onto the body. So, pag kukuten tayo isuda, or we will place both uh, upper and lower extremities flexed and near the body, folded on, onto the body. And then, next is, after flexing it, we will hold it for around 5 minutes. Alright? And then, we extend the legs and the arms fully by pulling both on the feet and the arms. And then, what do we do? We will release. So, titignan natin kung magre-recoil. Di ba? extend natin, no? Titignan natin kung magre-recoil siya or hindi. If an infant or a newborn is uh, did not show any response or minimal response lamang po or absent response, there is minimal coiling or no coiling at all, hindi siya bumalik na nag-flex, ibig sabihin there is uh, prematurity. However, if you are taking care of a full-term uh, neonate, it returns briskly to full flexion. So, di ba? Ipofold mo siya dito. And then, if flex mo. And then, if you release, magre-recoil po siya. That is for full-term neonate. So, that is how we determine prematurity using the recoil of extremities. I will show you a form that is placed on the chart of the preterm babies to determine the double width score. So, ipapakita ko po sa inyo yung ginagamit ng mga doktor to assess the prematurity of the patient. So, this is the form I was speaking of a while ago. And like I said, yung unang titignan natin is the posture. So, tignan nyo, di ba? Sa zero po, when we look at the uh, child in zero, makikita po natin dito that there is a little to no flexion on both upper and lower extremities. Pero pag may some, some degree of flexion, determine natin by giving a score of 1, 2, or 3. Okay, but if the child is fully flexed, we give the highest score of 4 for posture alone. Ito po yun. Alright? So, when we speak of the square window, ito naman po yung degree of flexion ng kanilang wrist. ba? So, sabi natin, pag 28 to 32 weeks, age of gestation po yung ating pasyente, they can only bend their wrist up to 90 degrees or less. Okay? So, pag mayroon siyang 90 degrees, Zero, yung ibibigay natin, less than 90 degrees, we give a score of negative 1. Pag mayroon siyang 60 degrees, we give a score of 1. 45 degree, we give a score of 2. And then, pag siya ay 30 degree, we give a score of 3. But, if there is 0 degrees or the, uh, the hand can touch the forearm, we give a score of 4. So, the highest score uh, is 4. Next, we also have your arm recoil. So, pag hindi siya bumalik, naka-180 pa rin yung kanyang uh, arms after releasing it, hindi siya nag-bend or nag-recoil, nag we give a score of 0. And then, we give a score then of uh, 1 if the, meron siyang konting angle. Okay? Kung nag-recoil ng mas malala, we give a score of 2. And then, if there is 90 degree recoiling, we give a score of 3. And then, Pag bumalik siya into full flexion, we give a score of 4. So, ganun po yun. Now, aside from those mentioned, ginagamit din natin yung scarf sign to determine the uh, age of prematurity for our patients. So, paano ba ginagawa yung scarf sign? So, we lay the uh, neonate 
in supine position and then the hand is taken around the neck to the opposite shoulder as far posteriorly as possible. So what do we do is uh, gagamitin natin yung hand ng bata. We will try to wrap it around the neck of the child and we will look into the gre to the degree at which the elbow reaches the uh, the body of the child. Okay? So if the elbows will reach near or across the midline of the chest, so kunwari yung bata, ano? Uh, you get the, the hand and then you try to bring those uh, the, the elbow up to the across. Kung yung yung elbow niya is near the midline or it even reaches across the opposite of the midline of the chest, that means na premature po yung bata. But if you try to do that in full-term neonates, mahihirapan ka pong ikunin yung elbows nila past the uh, midline of the chest. So the elbows will not reach the midline of the chest pag gagawin mo po yung scarf sign if the child is already full-term or mature. So, remember, ano? Yung elbow po, titignan natin yung degree kung saan yung marireach niya if it crosses the midline of the chest or even way past that point, it means that the infant is premature. Okay? So, that's what we call the scarf sign. We also have the heel to ear. Okay? When we do the heel to ear position, ang gagawin natin is that we place the uh, neonate in supine position and then the hips are laid flat on the bed what do we do is we try to raise the baby's foot as near to the ear without trying to force it okay so ang gagawin natin kunwari ito yung palms ay yung, yung soles of the foot of the child we will try to, na, na nakahiga we will try to raise it and place it near the ear of the child and then we will do an observation of the distance of the foot and the head as well as the degree of the extension on the knee. So, titignan po natin kung maaabot ba nung bata yung, yung, yung kanyang uh, heel, yung kanyang heel sa paa, yung kanyang ear. So, that is what we are going to do in this assessment finding. So, what are, uh, what are we expected to see if the child is preterm? There is little resistance and the foot can easily be drawn to the ear if the child is preterm. So, madali mo lang ibibend yung paa ng bata. Kung narito yung, yung uh, foot ng bata, madali mo lang ibibend na ilalagay sa kanyang ear if the child is preterm. But, if the child is full term, uh, there is marked resistance, so mahirap siyang gawin. And it is also impossible to draw or place the baby's foot into the ear. Okay, so mahihirapan kang ilagay yung kanyang heel sa tenga, malapit sa tenga. And that means that the child is already full term. We also have the popliteal angle. So how do we assess the popliteal angle? I think this is not uh, placed on your handouts. So in the popliteal angle, with the infant lying in supine position and with the diapers removed, the thigh is place gently on the infant's abdomen. So, parang ifo-fold din natin yung kanyang thigh, ifo-fold natin papunta sa kanyang chest. Okay? And then, the infant's abdomen, uh, the thigh is placed on the infant's abdomen with the knee fully flexed. After the infant has relaxed into this position, uh, you will gently grasp the foot and then the sides uh, uh, with one hand while supporting the other one. So, ano yung makikita natin dito? Uh, dito po, there is little to no flexion. I will show you a picture later on so that uh, you will see it clearly. There is little to no flexion or a 180 degree angle formed at the knee by the upper and lower leg. Uh, however, pag yung bata naman po ay full term, there is full flexion. Uh, or less than 90 degrees angle formed at the knee by the upper and lower leg. So, ganun po yung makikinat natin. I'll show you a picture later on for it to be clearer. Again, I will be showing you the form that is used by physicians to determine the Dobowitz score of the patient. So, unatin na, unahin na lang po natin yung scarf sign muna before we proceed to the heel to ear and then last po yung popliteal angle. Alright, so uh, in the scarf sign, like I said, we try to um, uh, to place the elbow 
onto the opposite side of the shoulder as much as possible. So we give a score of negative 1 if the elbow reaches the other side. Okay, so the opposite elbow reaches the other side, we give a score of uh, negative 1 kung kaya pong gawin ng batang yun, uh, yung to the other side. If the child's elbow reaches uh, the midline, even past the midline, pero hindi naman sa diretsong paganon, we give a score of 0. If it is just within the midline, we give a score of either 1 or 2. And then, if it's uh, hardly going to the chest, we give a score of 3. And then, pag mahirapan kang ilagay yung kanyang elbow up to the other side, we give a score of 4. Okay? So, the more resistance po na nagagawa ng bata, the more mature the child is. But if there is little to no resistance in doing the scarf sign na kaya mong ilagay yung kanyang elbow into the other side of the body, that means that the child is also preterm. Alright, so we also have the heel to ear. Sa heel to ear naman po, we look into the angle of the uh, lower extremity. So again, yung, yung paa niya, itatry natin ilalagay sa kanyang malapit sa ear. So if the, uh, if the foot creates a 180 degree angle, madali lang siyang ilagay doon yung kanyang heel, madaling ilagay sa kanyang ear, we give a score of zero. Okay, so pag ganito naman, yung nakikita mong assessment na uh, almost touching lang pero not, not totally touching the ear, we give a score, uh, this is negative 1, this is 0, okay? And then as you move further, that is uh, up to 4, okay? So ganito po ulit yung scoring. So the reason why we they placed a picture of this in the chart of the patient is that so that, so that when the doctor is assessing, nakikita niya as a form of comparison, okay? So, we also have the popliteal angle. Mas madali siyang i-explain kung meron siyang picture. So, in your popliteal angle, we will be trying to place the thigh, ito po yung thigh muscle, in the abdomen of the child. So, as you can see, tinitignan natin uh, dito na yung thigh is already placed near the abdomen. So, ang titignan natin dito is the degree of angle ng kanyang thigh muscle and nung kanyang foot. Okay? Uh, okay. So, yung angle na ito yung titignan natin. So, hindi naman sa diretso, unlike here na 180. Kung 180 dapat, nakaganon siya. Okay? Hindi naman siya 160. Alright? Hindi naman siya 140 or 120. I think this falls into the 90 degree angle. Okay, so yung score na ibibigay natin sa bata on the popliteal angle score is uh, 4. Tama. So, 4 po yung ibibigay. So, like I said, we have this uh, Dobowitz score chart uh, that is placed on the chart of the newborn para po madali natin siyang uh, gamitin as reference when we are doing the Dobowitz score. So, ganun po siya ginagawa. Aside from assessing the neuromuscular maturity of the preterm infant, we also do a physical assessment to determine the infant's uh, age of a prematurity. So, titignan natin yung breast. We also look into the ears, the male and female genitalia, along with the soles of the feet. And that will help us determine kung ilang weeks of gestation na ba or gaano ka preterm yung ating mga pasyente. So, when we look into the breast tissues, if the preterm infant is younger than 34 weeks AOG, their areola or the nipples are barely visible. Kung less than 34 weeks po sila, uh, halos wala kang makitang nipple and areola. If they are older than 34 weeks, the areola becomes raised. So, uh, meron parang raised na apart yung kanyang areola kasi nagpamukil kung alam ko mga parten. And then, if they are younger than 36 weeks AOG, they have no breast tissue yet because the breast tissue arises with increasing gestational age. So, again, pag 34 weeks, makikita mo medyo raised or may bumpy part yung kanyang areola. But if they are less than 36 weeks AOG, they have uh, a well-defined nipple, they have a well-defined areola, but they have not yet developed their breast 
tissues. Okay? So, makikita lang natin yung kanilang breast tissues pag sila ay full term. So, if they are 39 to 40 weeks, the newborn will have 5 to 6 millimeters of breast tissue and the amount will increase with age. So, the older or the more mature an infant is, the bigger their uh, breast tissues are. So, yun po yung isang tinitignan natin in the physical assessment for our Dubowit score, which is the breast tissue. Aside from that, we also look into the ears of the premature infant. So, if they are younger than 34 weeks, the ears are flat and they are relatively shapeless. So, wala po halos shape yung kanilang ears and then it's flat. Wala siyang parang curvatures na nakikita natin. But if they are age 34 to 36 weeks, they have slight incurving of the superior part. So, at that, meron siyang counting fold dito po on the superior part dito. Pero pag sila ay... Uh, sila ay younger than 34 weeks flat po, hindi mo halos makita yung incurvating part dito. Alright? So, pag 34 to 36 weeks, meron na po siyang incurvating on the upper part. Mapuform na po itong part pag 34 to 36 weeks na po yung bata. But, if the child is full term, the ears will have an incurving on the two-thirds of the pina. So, dito pong upper half, makikita mo meron na siyang mga incurvations. And if they are older than 39 weeks, the incurvating of the lobes and ear returns slowly to its original position if you fold them. So, pag 39 weeks, madaling mag-return to its original place yung pina kasi develop na po yan yung kanilang mga ear cartilages. Alright, we also have the male genitalia. The testicles are very high in the inguinal canal and there are also few rugae at the scrotum. So usually, pag ififil mo po yung testis ng, uh, ng male na preterm, usually parang empty yung kanilang scrotal sac dahil yung kanilang testis, testis or testicles have not yet descended and they are still in the inguinal canal kasi always remember no nagsustart siya na in your pelvis bumababa yung testicles nyo kasi pag babae sila yung nagpo-form na ovary pero pag lalaki sila yung nagpo-form na testicles so dun sa sila magsustart sa sa pelvis pelvic region and then bababa sila as time goes by and then pag nag-mature na yung bata, that's the time na mafe-feel mo na siya sa may scrotal sac. Okay? So pag full term, the testes are lower and there are also many rugae present on the scrotum. Pag sinabi nating rugae, these are your skin folds. Okay? Yung marami siyang rugae, parang skin folds sa may scrotal area. Alright? So always remember, the higher the testicles are, the more premature a baby is. But if the testes are already in the scrotum, that means that the child is full term. The less rugae or mas, uh, mas shiny or mas uh, smooth yung testes, the more preterm the child is. But the more uh, rugated it is, that means that the child is full term. We also have the female genitalia. Uh, how do we check the female genitalia is we abduct the uh, lower extremities of the child while she is in supine position. So, ano yung makikita natin? Usually, if the uh, patient is uh, preterm, the clitoris is prominent and then the labia majora is very small that it barely covers uh, the labia minora and the clitoris. So, uh, pag nakikita mo, para siyang tahong na naka-open, okay, naka-expose yung labia minora and the clitoris uh, because the majora are, are widely separated, okay, parang nakanganga yung labia maj majora po. So, that means that the child is preterm. But if the child is full term, the labia minora and clitoris are both covered by the labia Majora. So that's how we determine uh, prematurity using the female genitalia. And we also look into the uh, plantar creases or the sole creases. Pag sila ay premature po, napaka smooth ng kanilang soles of their feet. They have little to no sole creases. But if the child is full term, they have creases in their soles of the feet involving the heel or mukud. 
Okay? So, meron mga skin folds na po doon. Okay? So, that is a sign of maturity. So, that is your uh, physical assessment. Again, I will show you the chart that is uh, that is placed on the patient's um, records for the doctors and other healthcare providers to use during assessment. So, I will just give you an idea of how it looks like. So again, titignan natin yung skin ng bata. Again, the degree of lanugo. And then plantar surface, the breast, the eyes, the genitals uh, from both male and female. So iche-check lang po ni doctor yan or ni nurse yung ating uh, physical assessment findings. And then again, it also gives you a score of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So um, that will help us determine the age of prematurity of our patients. I'll sh in the next slide, I will be showing you a video of a computer-generated uh, scoring for Dobowitz. So, ipapakita ko po yun sa inyo later on. Now, as I said a while back, we can use uh, an online application for doing the Ballard score or the Dubovitz score. So, like I said, uh, this is used to determine the neuromuscular maturity and physical maturity of our preterm patients. So, dito po, ang gagawin natin is we can just clear, uh, we can just click uh, the assessment findings that we do in our patients and this application will automatically uh, give you or, or guide you in scoring the patient. So, kunwari, dito sa, iti-check natin yung posture. So, kunwari, yung nakita natin is there is uh, no no flexion on both upper and lower extremity. Click natin yan. So, as you can see, nag-register po dito yung zero. And then, we when we do the square window test, kunwari, ganito po yung angle niya, 60 degrees. So, as you can see, one yung naging score na nag-register dito. When we look into the arm recoil, so, kunwari, nag-90 degrees siya. Okay, or bumalik immediately after the uh, extension. So, after release, so we give a score of 4. And then, po, pletial angle na ituro ko po sa inyo kanina ito. Uh, kunwari, ito po, 180 or straight lang. So, that's the score of negative 1. Sa scarf sign naman po, sige, try natin itong uh, dito. Alright, so the elbows are way past the midline. And then, heel to ear, itry din na natin ito, ditong angle na ito. So, as you can see, the total neuromuscular maturity score is 4. Alright, so that means that the child is 25 weeks and 4 days uh, yung kanyang age of prematurity. Dito pong banda natin titignan. If the score is 4. So, how did we determine that? Using this total neuromuscular maturity scoring ditong banda. Okay, so we go to the physical maturity score naman ng ating patient. So, kunwari, we look into the skin. So, kunwari, the skin is smooth, pink, visible veins. Click natin ito. And then, we look at the nalanugo. Kunwari, there are uh, uh, abundant. Kunwari, yung kanyang lanugo or marami. And then, we look into the plantar surface. Tignan natin kung meron siyang creases. Kunwari, creases all over the entire foot. Kasi marami siyang soul creases. So, we check this one. And then, we look into the breast. Nakikita ba yung breast or hindi? So, tignan natin. Uh, kunwari, flat yung areola and there is no bud. Yun yung kunwari nakita natin na assessment sa ating patient. And then, we look into the eyes and ears. Kunwari, i-click natin ito. It is formed and firm. And then, there is also instant recoil. So, we check this one. And then, genitals. Kunwari, the testicles have not yet are descending. There is a furge. Click that. So as you can see, ini score niya automatic yung ating patient. But you can do this manually because this form is placed on the chart of the patient. And then kunwari, uh, if you click this one, female genitalia, mawawala po yung sa male genitalia. So as you can see, yung total score naman po ng physical maturity ng bata is 12 weeks. So when we add this together, we have a total score of 16. 4 plus 12, we have a total score of 16. So, saan po siya? It's, way, it's within this uh, area. Okay, so 
16 yung total score natin. So, pinakamalapit po siya dito. So, um, basically, the child is 30 weeks and 3 days based on our assessment score. So, ganun po yung uh, paggamit ng ating Ballard score or yung Jobowitz score. We check the neuromuscular maturity and then we add the scores together. We also check the physical maturity and then we add the scores together and then we will determine the weeks of gestation based on the total score that we get from the patient. So, yun po yung ating a Dobowitz score and or Ballard score. Kung gusto nyong subukan yung online Dobowitz score application na ginamit ko kanina in our presentation, you can just go to this website or this link. I will be uh, placing or sending you this specific link so that you can try it for yourself. Now, what are the problems in care that are related to prematurity? We have to remember that the number one problem or the number one reason why these premature infants die is because of impaired gas exchange that is uh, usually related to the immaturity of the pulmonary system or the respiratory system. We all know that the surfactants are developed or formed during the seventh month of life. And usually, these uh, children suffer from impaired gas exchange due to poor development of their uh, pulmonary capillary bed. They also lack surfactant because surfactant is uh, produced on the seventh month of life. And usually, pag wala silang surfactant, this leads to lung collapse. So, that is the number one problem, impaired gas exchange that is related to immature pulmonary functioning. So, what do we do? As much as possible, we prepare for resuscitation within the first two minutes at birth. And then we also keep the baby warm to decrease energy expenditure because the last thing that we want to do is for the child to uh, do chills. Kasi the more na nag chill siya, the more na energy yung na burn, the more that the child will crave for oxygen. And hindi na nga siya nakakahinga so that will lead to again compounding problems leading to uh, metabolic and respiratory acidosis and so on. Okay, so aside from that, we also carry out all procedures gently. As much as possible, we are gentle to our patients because the tissues of these preterm infants are extremely sensitive to trauma and they can easily Bruce, mabadali po silang magpasapasa pag hindi tayo po careful sa ating pagbibigay ng care sa ganitong mga patients. Remember that they are very delicate because they are preterm or premature ano, so that we have to be very delicate and gentle when it comes to carrying the procedures. Kunwari pag magsi-CPR po tayo, hindi po tayo ganun ka brusko magbibigay, dapat gent as much as possible we are uh, gentle. Bakit? Because if there is bruising, the more na nagbubruise po kasi yung bata, ano? Remember that when uh, the blood is destroyed because of bruising, ang mangyayari, it will uh, produce bilirubin, leading to hyperbilirubinemia at pwede ding mag-jaundice yung bata pag marami siyang bruising. And that can also be dangerous because it can also lead to Kernicterus, which uh, will now interfere with the functionings of the brain. So, pinipigilan po natin na magkaroon siya ng hyperbilirubinemia because of the bruising. Kaya pa tayo as much as possible gentle in giving our care and uh, carrying out our procedures to the patient. And then also, we don't give 100% oxygen, uh, more than 4 milliliters per hour to prevent retrolental fibroplasia or neonatal blindness okay because this happens because of oxygen toxicity uh, pag masyadong uh, concentrated po yung oxygen mo it can lead to retrolental fibroplasia so pwedeng mabulag po yung bata if you are giving them uh, more than 4 uh, 4 liters per minute po uh, per hour po na Oxygen. Okay, so also remember to continually monitor oxygen saturation kasi baka nasosobrahan mo po ng pagbigay ng oxygen sa mga batang ito which will lead to their blindness. Again, 
too much of something is dangerous kaya as much as possible we don't give uh, 100% oxygen for more than what is prescribed by the doctor to prevent neonatal blindness or retrolental fibroplasia. Now, aside from impaired gas exchange, we also have the problem on deficient fluid volume that is related to insensible water loss at birth and small stomach capacity. So, uh, pwedeng mababa po yung fluid volume ng mga patients natin because like I said, they will have problems when they, with their gaseous exchange. So, the more na mahihirapan silang huminga, the more na insensible water loss ang mangyayari. And uh, aside from that, maliit kasi yung stomach ng mga batang uh, preterm kaya uh, it will be harder for us to hydrate these kinds of patients. So what do we do? Uh, hydrate the baby and we only give 160 to 200 ml of fluids per kilogram of body weight daily. Uh, so this is usually more than for our term infants. We also can give uh, intravenous fluids and breastfeeding. It should be started as soon as possible para po ma-alleviate natin yung problems on deficiency of fluid volume. Aside from that, we try to monitor the weight gain of our patients daily. We also monitor their urine output by measuring or weighing their diapers. And then we also measure their specific gravity. Titignan po natin kung gaano ka-concentrated yung urine so that the doctor will know what type of uh, IV to give and how much IVF to give our patients who are having deficient fluid volume. Aside from that, we can also do uh, a check on their level of electrolytes so that we can also give them the proper electrolyte rescue that they need. So yun po yung mga problems that are related to uh, this premature uh, neonates that we may encounter during our professional career. The next problem that is related to gestational age is uh, post-maturity. These are what we call post-term infants. Ano pa kasi yung tinatawag natin na post-term? Paano natin ikakategorize kung yung isang bata ay post-term po? When we speak of post-term infants, they are born after the onset of the 42 weeks of pregnancy. So, pag lumampas po siya sa uh, prescribed na 42 weeks AOG, more than 43 weeks na po yung isang pasyente na buntes, we can already consider that pregnancy as post-term. Okay? So, usually, the doctors will prescribe labor induction if the pregnancy is already two weeks post-term. So, kailangang ilabas na yung uh, baby if it is already two weeks post-term. Bakit? Kasi we are trying to prevent the post-term syndrome. Okay? Kailangan natin maiwasan na magka-post-term syndrome yung bata because that can be life-threatening. So, sir, how do we induce labor? So, the patient who is uh, post-term na yung pregnancy, they can uh, subject her to cesarean section delivery or they can also uh, induce labor through giving of oxytocin to the patient. Okay, so ang importante doon is mailabas na po yung bata bago po siya magkaroon ng post-term syndrome. Hindi po pwedeng magtagal ng sobra-sobra yung bata sa loob ng sinapupunan because it can lead to, like I said, post-term syndrome. Anong ka kasi yung post-term syndrome na paulit-ulit kong sinasabi? Uh, when we say post-term syndrome, the infants or the fetus who remain in utero with the failing placenta may die. We all know that the placenta will also lose its capacity if it's already way past its prime. Ibig sabihin, uh, the older the fetus gets, the weaker the placenta is in performing its function. So the more na nagtatagal po yung bata sa sinapupunan, the more din po na humihina si placenta to perform its functioning. And what will happen? The fetus stays there in the womb while the placenta is not absorbing the needed oxygen, nutrients, or blood from the uterus. Ang mangyayari is that magkakaroon po ng deprivation of the needed uh, supply for the child to uh, survive. So the placenta, like I said, only is effective for 40 weeks. After this, the placenta loses its 
function. Kaya nga po tayo may theory of aging placenta na habang tumatagal, nalulus ni placenta yung kanyang function. Therefore, pag nagkaroon dapat ng scarcity of blood and oxygen na mafifil ni baby, dapat siya mismo yung kusang lalabas. Alright? So, that is what we call post-term syndrome. Once kasi na nagkaroon po ng losing of placental functioning at bumaba yung oxygen level ng bata, tendency is magkakaroon siya ng reflex relaxation of the anal sphincter leading to meconium. Uh, the passing of the meconium leading to secondary pneumonia. Maaaring magkaproblema po yan pagkalabas. Alright? So, that is... Uh, what you call post-term infant and the post-term syndrome. Now, how do we assess a post-term uh, patient? Okay, so aside from doing the LMP, pwede din po natin isubject yung ating mga pasyente na buntis to ultrasound or sonogram. So, ano pong importante na gagawin natin dito is that we measure the biparietal diameter of the fetal skull. Titignan natin kung gaano kalaki yung ulo ng post-term fetus in relation to the measurements of the hip or the pelvis of the patient. Bakit natin kailangan gawin ito is that we want to rule out cephalopelvic disproportion. Titignan natin kung kakayanin ba ng patient natin na post-term pregnant na uh, mag-labor. Kung kakayanin niyang mag-normal spontaneous delivery or vaginal delivery. Kasi kung merong cephalopelvic disproportion, masyadong malaki na yung ulo ng bata in relation to the pelvis of the mother, then they may consider not going through trial labor, diretsong CS na po yung pasyente. Alright? So we can also do non-stress test or what we call the complete biophysical profile. Bakit po natin gagawin ito? We want to look into the adequate placental functioning. Di ba nga po yung non-stress test, tinitignan natin how well the placenta is doing when it comes to absorption of blood. So, yun po yung gagawin natin. So, the moment po that the patient failed the non-stress test, then it's time to deliver the patient by doing cesarean section or by inducing labor through oxytocin incorporation to the IV. Okay, they can also do amniocentesis. Okay, so pwedeng uh, kukuha sila ng uh, sample ng amniotic fluid to determine lung maturity by surfactant detection. So titignan natin kung uh, complete na ba yung formation niya ng kanyang surfactants or they can also test the presence of uh, meconium in the amniotic fluid through amniocentesis. Okay, so the post-term infant have inadequate placental functioning or meron na pong nakita na meconium, that's the time that they do emergency CS to deliver this post-term fetus. Now, ano nga yung mga itsura ng post-term newborns? So, these post-term newborns may have these kinds of uh, appearances. Uh, they have dry, cracked, or leather-like skin which lacks fluid. And there is also an absence of vernix casosa. Bakit? Saan nawala yung vernix casosa? It has already been reabsorbed in utero or it may also be swallowed by the newborn. Kasi nga nagtagal na siya doon sa loob. Kaya baka nakain na niya yung vernix casosa or na reabsorb na siya ng skin ng uh, fetus. Aside from that, they are lightweight. Bakit sila magaan? Because of a recent weight loss, because of poor placental functioning. Hindi po kasi nag-absorb na ng dugo and nutrients uh, to supply the, uh, the demands of the fetus. Kasi nga po, nalulus na ni placenta yung kanyang functioning. Kaya, it's very typical for us to see uh, post-term infants who are lightweight. They also have overgrown fingernails that is beyond the end of the fingertips. Okay, so mahahaba na po yung kanilang mga kuko. Bakit? Kasi nga po masyado na silang nagtagal sa loob. Therefore, yung mga kuko nila lumaki na rin halos. And then they also displace the alertness of a two-week-old baby. 
And then they may also be meconium stained and there may also be less amniotic fluid kasi nga baka na inum na ito ng uh, post-term fetus na ito. So this is usually the appearance that we see in a post-term newborn. Now what are the problems and care that are related to post-maturity? So number one na problema again natin dyan is difficulty establishing respirations. So dito naman po, the difficulty of initiating breathing is not caused by the lack of lung maturity but it is caused by the presence of meconium which may be aspirated because of the effects of anoxia. Gaya ng sinabi natin, if there is low oxygen level in utero, pag yung bata nakakafeel na konti lang yung nakukuha niya na oxygen, nagkakaroon siya ng anoxia, magkakaroon siya ng reflex relaxation of the anal sphincter. At pag nag-relax yung anus, lalabas si meconium leading to meconium staining, pwedeng ma-inhale or ma-aspirate ng baby ito. And then it goes to the lungs leading to meconium aspiration. So, pwedeng magkaroon din ng secondary pneumonia ang mga post-term infants. Alright? So, anong gagawin natin paglabas immediately ng bata? We don't do back rubbing and we also don't give high pressure oxygen. Bakit? Kasi pag if we initiate the newborn to cry immediately, eh alam nating meconium stain yun. The child will inhale the meconium deeper into the lungs. So, hindi din po tayo agad-agad magbibigay ng oxygen na high pressure because we might be pushing the meconium down deeper into their respiratory tract. Okay, so we prevent the backflow of meconium by not doing back rubbing, by not stimulating the baby to cry, and by not giving high-pressure oxygen administration. Instead, what do we do? We immediately intubate the child for deep tracheal suctioning to remove the meconium that are inhaled by the uh, post-term infant. Alright, so aside from that, we also have hypoglycemia, which is a common problem for these types of uh, patients. Meron silang in a uh, hypoglycemia because of the insufficient uh, insufficient source of glycogen. Kasi nga po, they already have used some of their supply of glycogen in utero. Kasi nga po, the placenta is not anymore doing its function of supplying the demands of the body of the post-term infant. Kasi nga, it has already lost some of its functioning. Okay, so some of the glycogen have already been consumed. There, uh, because of poor placental functioning. So what do we do to prevent this type of uh, problem? Immediately, we can uh, allow the child to breastfeed. Minsan nga yung mga batang post-term, hayok na hayok silang umiinom or nagsasak because that's how hungry they are. So that is one way for us to alleviate hypoglycemia by giving them breastfeeding. Aside from that, we can also uh, insert an IVF and then the doctor may also prescribe uh, D5LR or pwedeng D5050. So, 50% uh, sugar po ano? Uh, D5050 yung ibibigay natin sa mga pasyente. 50% dextrose uh, usually to prevent hypoglycemia. Aside from that, we also have thermoregulation problems. Uh, bakit tayo may thermoregulation problems or mahihirapan silang mag-regulate ng kanilang temperature? Because of the lack of subcutaneous fats. Di ba po, sinabi natin kanina that these types of newborns usually have... Uh, are usually lightweight kasi nga naubos na nila yung mga subcutaneous fats nila because it has been converted by the body into uh, energy. Uh, into glucose kasi nga hindi na po nagpa-function ng mga igisip placenta kaya yung mga fat stores niya na gamit niya and because of the lack of subcutaneous fats that are already used in utero they may have problem regulating uh, their temperature so what do we do? we protect the child from chilling and we transport the child to a special care, faci care facility placing the child in an infant warmer or drying the child immediately, or doing kangaroo care, so yung mga diniscuss po natin last time, those are all uh, plausible 
na procedures to alleviate thermoregulation problems. Aside from that, they may also have polycythemia or uh, too much RBC. Okay, this may be present because of lack of oxygen in the final week. So, anong ginawa ng bone marrow ng bata? Sabi niya, uy, wala na tayo masyadong oxygen. And the body may think, baka kulang lang tayo sa RBC na nag-carry ng oxygen. So, the bone marrow will create more, more, more blood to compensate for the lack of oxygen. So, anong nangyari? Dumami ng dumami yung RBC in the hopes of increasing uh, hemoglobin. Uh, so, anong nangyari? Because of that poor placental functioning, nagkaroon siya ng polycythemia. And that will also lead to elevated hematocrit due to polycythemia and lower plasma volume. So, usually, uh, the doctors can prescribe uh, IVF or intravenous fluids to alleviate these conditions para masaturate po natin yung ating dugo or para may dilute po natin at ma-alleviate yung elevated hematocrit and polycythemia, dadagdagan po natin ng fluids yung bata. So what do we do? Or what can be the interventions that we can provide these patients? Number one is we can do health teaching. Okay, We give health teaching to the parents regarding the need for closely monitoring the baby for meconium aspiration and hypoglycemia. So dapat, we uh, instruct the mother na ka misis kahit uh, dahil po nagtagal yung bata sa loob po ng inyong sinapupunan, hindi po ibig sabihin na siya po ay super healthy. You still need to look for signs and symptoms of difficulty of breathing and hypoglycemia. Alright, so sabihin po din natin sa kanila that they may also be predisposed to having a secondary pneumonia because of meconium aspiration. So, pwedeng magbigay tayo ng health teachings sa ating mga patients, especially sa mga mothers and other significant uh, persons caring for the child to look for signs and symptoms that are reportable. Uh, we also give emotional support to the mother because they may also have guilt feelings of not providing her child the nutrients it needs. Diba nga, sabi niya, oh, yung placenta ko kasi hindi nag-function ng maigi kaya naging ganito yung bata. They may feel guilty or they may blame themselves for not being sufficient, especially when it comes to their placental functioning. So sabihin po natin, misis, wala naman pong may gusto ng nangyari and wala naman po tayong control sa functioning ng inyong placenta. So there is no need for you to blame yourself. So we empower the mother by giving her emotional support. You listen to her, let her verbalize her emotions. Aside from that, you also advise for provision of follow-up care until until at least school age. So, dapat po regular check-up po yung ating mga pasyente for us to be able to track neurologic symptoms because their lack of oxygen because of in utero, ano? because of the Failure of the placenta to supply the oxygen needed by the child may have caused developmental delay. So, maaaring yung low oxygen levels, maaaring napektuhan po yung utak ng bata. Kaya dapat kailangan natin siyang itrack yung kanyang mental development delay at least until the school age. So, you ask the parents to conduct regular check-up or um, meet with their healthcare providers as much as possible for us to determine kung nagkaroon ba ng developmental delay because of post-maturity. And that ends our discussion for today's lesson and I hope that you learned something from me today regarding the Dubowitz score or the Ballard score and the post-maturity. Uh, again, you have to prepare yourself for a short examination on your Edmodo classroom and your attendance will be checked for today's meeting through sending a selfie with your parents or your Joa in our Facebook Messenger group chat. Again, this has been Dr. Jeff Le Reboron. Maraming maraming salamat once again for listening. Enjoy the rest of the day and keep safe. I hope to see you all soon in the flesh. Maraming maraming salamat.